Hello and welcome to the ArcSight Investigate installation and use video. We're going to be taking a quick run through of how to install, investigate and use it. So firstly, you'll start off with three nodes, Hercules node or an investigate node, a Vertica node and an actual worker if you want to, one or more actual workers. What this does is allows you to separate out the components. So firstly, what we're going to do is generate some RSA keys that can be copied between the different uh, worker nodes and the master node and that allows for Kubernetes and so forth to be installed onto the other, other hosts without too, many, too, without too much problem. Then we're going to copy the keys over to our worker node, uh, 134.181. So now that that is done, we can install Kubernetes itself, the ArcSight installer. It's an RPM file. We simply do this via yum. So we'll run that now. Do the install. And this installation takes a little while. And once that's installed, we're actually going to then make sure that uh, it's listening on port 8888, which it is. So now we can actually log into the web browser and just double check that our installation has occurred correctly. So you'll browse to HTTP on port 8080, 8888, I should say. Uh, nothing's installed at this point in time. We're now going to run our master node install. Run this install script as per the documentation. Make sure that it's running on the right uh, port, uh, sorry, uh, IP address. If you're, if you're running on um, an incorrect IP address uh, and it goes to go out to the internet on that wrong adapter, it will fail. Um, also make sure you've got your proxy set. So in the case of if you're running it from within HP, you would use the HTTP uh, proxy on port 8080 as you do with your web browser. So this process again takes a little while, it takes a few minutes. It does a whole bunch of things, it installs uh, Cube, uh, Flannel, ETCD, Vault and other items. Um, have a look at some of the training material that's on IROC already, which will uh, help explain what some of these different services do. Again, this takes a little while to install. Uh, you'll notice that a bunch of virtual network cards and adapters are installed as part of, part of Kubernetes. Uh, so basically each of, each of these services under the hood will run on its own private subnet uh, quite deliberately to keep them help keep, keep themselves containerized. As you can see, there's quite a lot going on during this installation process, and it does take some time. Uh, having a fast internet connection will also work. So that part's now finished. Um, what we can do now is go back to our administration console, and you'll notice now that we have a single master node up and running on port 180, uh, IP address 180. Our Docker repository URL has been set and we now also have the ability to install, investigate as well as event broker. But what we want to do now is as per the documentation and as you can see on the screen, we want to install our uh, worker nodes. So we're going to run this script against all of our worker nodes uh, IP addresses. So in my case, it's .181. So this is a very good reason as to why you need your RSA key sorted out. Otherwise, uh, this will fail horribly.
So run that. You'll notice these services being brought up on your work node, in my case, dot one eight one. Right, so that's worker node is now installed. It's installed correctly. What we can do now is go back to our administration console and you'll notice that we have a dot one eight one worker node installed and green light, so that's good. We can go over to the deploy button here and we can now click on deploy of investigate as well as event broker. Doing so will kick off that installation process. You can switch them both on if you wish. It can take some time for these components to be installed, but it's largely an automated process. So we can run top and just have a look at some of the different processes that are running. You'll notice many, many different processes running at different times, Hypercube, Vault, Java, Flannel, etc. All right, so let's now do the Vertica install. Once we've got the packages on there, we can have a look at vertica.properties. We want to make sure we've got our time zone set correctly, obviously, to our worker node and our master node. Uh, we've got our host set up correctly, uh, our DB username, database, and as well as password are all set correctly. And this is what the install process is actually going to uh, install as. So think of them as the parameters into the actual installation itself. When you run install vertica.sh, you will be asked for your root password a couple of times. Again, like the investigate side of things, it takes a few minutes for this to install. But as per some of the latest builds of, of investigate and vertica, uh, the installation script, script is all containing. There's there's no nothing really else to run or to worry about. We just need to let it, let it do its, its job. Now you'll see that it's creating the database called investigate for us. This is the database name that we'll be referring to at all times. It's now going to try and bring up the node. You'll notice that it says down a few times and eventually it should say up if everything's working correctly. And so that seems to have worked quite well. Install some extra packages. Our node is up, which is good. And now what we'll do is install a what we call the Kafka scheduler. And what that does is basically creates a scheduler out to dot 180, so our Hercules master node to pull events from Event Broker. And then when we get the status and so forth, we can actually see uh, what's going on. So Vertic is installed. We'll go back to our admin page. And we can start setting up some of the configuration items. So we'll click on deployment. You'll see that uh, investigate and event broker have been deployed correctly, which is great. We can now go to the configuration page. And this allows us to take a look at a couple of items for event broker. But at the same time, uh, what we're really wanting to look at here is to point investigate at our in, uh, Vertica database. And so we'll go and change those settings now. Uh, Vertica-1.aus.hp.com. Obviously, DBA admin. Uh, investigate is our database name. And the password of DBA admin as we've got in our Vertica.properties files.
whenever you make changes like this, you can actually go back to the node management piece or the deploy deployment tab, and you'll see that it's the uh, deployment is in progress again. That just tells us that there's uh, an operation going on with the configuration. And now we're done. So the next piece is to bring some events into Event Broker itself. So here I've got ArcMC 2.6. Uh, I've already got a connector set up to it. So we're just going to take a look at the destination settings. It's really quite straightforward. It's like any other event broker destination that, we, that we're well aware of how to use. Uh, it just the, the, the trick here is that it simply has a very particular topic name. We've got to make sure that we get that right. Otherwise, we won't see events. So if I click on the destination settings, take a closer look at it. You'll notice that we've got our uh, Hercules uh, master node going to 39092, not not the normal 9092. So we've placed Event Broker a little further up the stack there. And there's the topic name. That's really important. Got to make sure we get the COM HPE Hercules EB Ceph 0 topic correct. Once we've done that, we can uh, take a look at our actual database to make sure that we're pulling in events. So we run. A status check of the Kafka schedule that we set up before so we just want to get a status this time and you'll see a whole bunch of information there you'll see over the last few minutes we've been pulling in some events so these numbers are continually changing and going up so that's good that means that we're actually getting something coming into the database and we can also run some other checks to make sure that we're getting uh, events in. So we'll run the uh, VSQL against the investigate database, db admin, db admin. And then we uh, basically get a count on the hack.super schema, which is effectively our scheduler. And we see that you know, we have a, any number of count in there. And if we leave it go for a little while, for a couple of minutes, we then run that command again, we should see a change in that number, hopefully an increase. All right, so let's do a search. So what we want to do is go back to our master node and log into port 30001. Now again, like anything within Investigate, it's HTTP, not HTTPS, at least for the beta anyway. First thing we need to do is create a new user. So I'll give them a, a name, some user, an email address and a password. Now the email address is actually what you log in with along with the password, not the actual name itself. So we'll create our initial system admin, we'll log in with this person, on the dashboard section we'll show a little later on where you can actually add your search results a bit like in logger where you add your your uh, search result widgets we're going to create a basic search here search number one we can rename that so we uh, makes it easy for us to understand and, and remember what it is but you'll notice just like logger we, we, the program actually helps us build out our initial investigation search which makes life quite easy so I'm going to do a very, really, really simple one. Source address contains 10.10. .10. We can uh, alter our field set that we're using. And we can save that field set if we want to. Because uh, I've only been getting events for a little while now, we can just run it over the last 15 or 30 minutes. And then run that search. Pull back some events. This green columns are indicating that there's events been flowing in, which is nice. see all the Ceph fields and so forth as you'd expect and what we can do here is create a visualization we can do a simple one here pie chart We can choose our field and the nice part about investigators we can do a drag and drop which makes life really easy for us so we're going to do a count of destination address i guess against the actual category outcome so this might help us find outliers for firewall deniers and so forth so once we've done that you'll see the visualization come up almost immediately click done and then we can uh, add that as a dashboard to our dashboard section if we wish. And we can keep adding those dashboards as well. 